There are a couple of topics that come up on the exams quite a lot and I go through these in most of my courses because they come up in quite a few exams and that is the best practice way to securely authenticate from an EC2 instance to another service in AWS. So as an example here, we have an EC2 instance and we have an S3 bucket, so an Amazon simple storage service bucket. And that's a object storage system in which we store data like files and videos and so on. And what we need to do is this EC2 instance wants to access data in the bucket. Maybe it wants to write data to the bucket or read data from the bucket. So how does it have the credentials to actually access S3? And there's a couple of ways of doing this. And the first way is using the command line interface to configure access keys on the instance. So what that means is you store access keys on the instance and those access keys are associated with an IAM user account. And that IAM user account will have a policy either directly attached or through a group. So whatever permissions are assigned to that user, those permissions are what the EC2 instance will use to access the bucket. So it's not actually directly using the user account, you know, you're not configuring the user password or anything, but you're configuring the access keys that are associated with the user on the EC2 instance. And the EC2 instance is then able to use the policy permissions that are assigned to the account where the access keys come from to access the bucket. So we'll see how to do this in the console so it makes more sense. But the problem with this way of doing it is that you're actually storing access keys on your EC2 instance. And that can be a security concern because they're plain text, they're very secure. You know, your access keys will give any attacker who gets hold of them the same permissions as you have in your account. So for my account, I have full administrative privileges to my account. If somebody got hold of my access keys, they would then be able to do anything they want with my AWS account. So that would be bad. Now, of course, they'd have to compromise my instance first. So for example, if they compromise my key pair, they'd access the instance and then they can access the access keys and then use those to escalate their privileges and access anything in AWS using my account. So that's not good and we wanna try and avoid that. In this lesson, I'll show you in the console how we actually configure access keys using the CLI because there are still use cases for it. And then in the next lesson, I'll show you how to use roles instead, which is much more secure. So in the console, I'm going to launch an instance. We're gonna use the Linux 2 AMI, T2 Micro. I don't mind what subnet it's in. Gonna go through to security groups. I do need to make sure for this one that we have port 22 from anywhere or from your own IP address, whichever suits you. And let's go and launch that instance. I've given my instance a bit of time to boot. What I'm gonna do is copy its public IP to my clipboard. Make sure you're in the directory with your key pair file. I'm gonna type ssh-i, put in the key pair file, and then ec2-user at, and then the IP address. And that's gonna connect me to my instance. So I'm connected to the instance. The other thing I wanna do is create an S3 bucket, which we're gonna to attempt to authenticate to. So back in the console, I'm gonna head over to S3. And in S3 at the moment, I don't have any buckets. So let's create one here. And we're just gonna call this DCT-AWS course test 01. So hopefully that will be unique. And let's just create that bucket. So the bucket name was unique. Now let's just add something to the bucket. So I'm gonna go into my bucket, upload, choose add files. And let's just go in and I'm just gonna choose one of these files that we're gonna use later in the course anyway, and just upload that. So it doesn't matter what file, I just wanna add something into my bucket. So now we can head back to the command line. So what I want to do is run the command AWS S3 LS to use the AWS command line interface. So this is going to list the buckets in my account. But as you can see, it says unable to locate credentials. So we don't have the credentials we need. So what we can do is run AWS configure, and this is where it's gonna ask for the access key. So we need to go back to IAM to get an access key. So let's head to identity and access management, and let's go to users, I'm gonna choose my user account, security credentials, and I've already got an access key. I'm not using this one, I'm gonna delete it. 
and just create a new one. So you only get to see the secret key once. So you can download it if you're going to need it later on. For me, I'm just going to copy that to my clipboard. Let's paste that in and I'm going to paste in the secret access key. And remember, you can always delete these to make sure that um, nobody else sees them. So that's what I'll do after this video. Now I'm going to put in my region as AP Southeast dash two and leave the rest. And I'm just going to clear my screen, bring it down to the middle and let's run the AWS S3 LS again. So now we can see the bucket and if we want to look inside the bucket, we can actually put in S3 colon slash slash and then the bucket name. And we can also see the object that's in the bucket. So that all works great. Now, the problem that I mentioned before is that we now have something on our file system. So let's change directory to this path. Oops. So what we need to do is change to slash dot AWS. And then in here, you'll see that you've got the config and the credentials. So the config is pretty benign. So that actually has the region name in it. So we can see that it's got the region as AP Southeast 2. But the credentials file actually contains the access key. So it's got the access key ID and the secret access key. So as you know, if you compromise these, you can compromise the account, or at least if the user who this is associated with has full privileges like my account does. So very insecure way of storing that information. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to remove that file. So that should be gone. And then if we run the command again, AWS S3 LS, we'll find that we're unable to locate credentials. And in the next lesson, I'll show you how to use an IAM role instead.